This week on Dr. Drew After Dark. So, I fucking decorated that wall okay, behind so, me. So it was good. Oh, man. So it was good. It fucking shot. Like, I watched it go by me. I was like, oh, my God. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, holy crap. Hey, Hitler. Hey, Sickler. How are we doing? Hitler and Sickler. Hitler and Sickler. How about, that? How about that? Wow. Kyle? Woo! Just like a punching bag in a gym, just one single one hanging real low. Speed, speed, speed bag. Speed bag. Speed bag. <laughs> <laughs> just, da, 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 yeah, okay. My ball okay. bag and pee pee. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Welcome, everyone. Dr. After Dark, 818-253-1693 is our phone number for the voice messages. And, of course, we'll put a call out on various social media platforms when we are taking live calls. So keep an eye out for that as well. And, of course, the emails never grow old. Dr. Drew After Dark at gmail.com. Support people that support us. Great Ryan Stickler in the house. Thank you very yeah. much for having me back. It's about thank time. you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm surprised how long it's been. Yeah, I, I I had to kind of think about it myself. I think I did your podcast in between though, back when you, you did, were, and yeah. I I did yours, I believe, in the old YMH studio. Before yes, you guys had in here. Reseda, not yeah, in, yeah. yeah before. by the Arby's. Are we allowed to still uh-huh. say that now? <laughs> yep, you can finally reveal that. <laughs> Right. Fuck Reseda, we are not there anymore. We, okay. You turn into the complex at the Arby's. <laughs> yeah, at the Arby's, y'all. Uh, at the Arby's. I, I shit myself. Oh, he, I, I, I encouraged today. I made a huge mistake, everybody. I encouraged and enough to start using more drops of me. I am really gay. That That's a, probably the best. That's probably the best drop I've, of me I've ever heard. Do it again. You got to understand how gay I am. <laughs> <laughs> really good. It's really Rolled good. Right off your tongue. I got yeah. a whole lot more. Oh, you got a whole lady <laughs> oh, of penis. All right. Uh, <laughs> the Honeydew Podcast, of course. Uh, also, 2018 album, Get a Hold of Yourself. Number one stand up album on Billboard charts. Uh, and you've produced a bunch of stuff. What's the latest one? I don't know where to start. I'm my special. Sets. My special. Lefty Son. I directed it myself. I produced it myself. Shot at the Dynasty in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, it's available on my YouTube now. It's called great. Lefty Son. It's free. Obviously, everything out on YouTube is not free to, to create, but it is free. So go watch it. Like it. Share it comment on it all that good stuff please it's doing well now you guys all know ryan so i don't have to go into any detail that we've been through a couple times already and by the way those of you on hold for calls i will get to you shortly but you and i have a couple other things to talk about yes sir i you, still don't have an orgasm when i come <laughs> wait what? Just, you, so, so ryan is that just liquid without the pleasure? Is that what that means? I, I didn't even really hear what I was saying. I, 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 I was going to tell you that you, now I think you understand why I just ignore it and keep Yeah, it power so, through it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I visited you in Santa Monica, and you told me a hair-raising tale about yeah. your place there and the yeah. riots. Have you, have you talked about that a lot? Um, yeah, we did a full episode on it. We talked for about Dew. it. Yeah, for Honeydew. I, I just Not from, much just elsewhere. Just sketch though. it out here for my audience because it, it was just – I think about it – you know, you were telling me before the mics heated up that it was scary, and I thought, I, dude, I wake up in short of breath in the middle of the night thinking about what you... I didn't go through it. You went through it. Really? It's, it, think it's about bothered that. me ever since. Yeah, yeah. it was... Um, so when you guys were all transitioning down to Austin, I was moving into my own studio, got a space at the Santa Monica Music Center, and this is right in... I think it was May, June, uh, it was, of 2020. So we're fresh into the pandemic. Um, and... The Black Lives Matter movement is going on, and there are some riots around Los Angeles. Well, Santa Monica was ground zero. Ground zero. It was a huge riot there. Big time. And I want to make it clear that there are assholes in every group, right? We all know that. Good people and assholes. Well, the good people met. They all met at the beach. And what the the idiots were doing was using these assemblies as their meeting place. Mm. Then the good people would go south, and then the assholes came east. Mm. And they came up Santa Monica Boulevard. And, you know, we never thought they'd get past. Lincoln is like sort of once you cross that, you're you're starting to head out of the west side. And yeah. that's 8th Street. We're yeah. out on 19th Street. Yeah. And we're also on a weird street where there are auto dealers. So we have this extra wide street so those big trucks can come and pull in and dump the cars. So it's a weird place. And... It was very organized. It was very strategic. Uh, they came early and circled the place and told us. Your, your building. Yeah. yeah. We're coming back. They gave you a heads up. We're coming. So 
Actually, meaning evacuate or meaning what? this shit's going to be robbed. So you can get the hell out of here or you can stay. They were okay. not they were not hiding it. Okay. Um, Annie showed up and helped me. We just we had just got in there. I had just recorded two episodes. I have not missed a podcast. I've been podcasting now for about 12 years. I haven't missed an episode in once in a week. Never. And, and these were essentially gangbangers, right? Oh, man. Yeah. No, they really weren't. They were... Well, you said they're so organized. They made me think They about were organized. It. So I would see them all texting. Mm -hmm. I would see them talking to one another, and they would say, we're over here. Um, I had a lot of questions like, you know, was it all black people? I was like, no. I saw... I, if I had to generalize a, a group... I would say they were young. Of I would course. go with youth. I would not go with a race. It was yeah. an age. Yeah. And I saw just as many blonde white chicks driving cars as I did Latinos, as I did black people, as I did everybody. And um, so it's sort of hitting a wave. The first wave came up, and they just started bashing windows and stuff. They didn't really steal much, mm. um, just destruction. The second wave literally came with rolling suitcases and everything else, and... They just robbed the store. They robbed the radio place next and, to and us. And you said Annie was helping you. Did you guys get your equipment out? We took everything. Equip we left yeah. cables and furniture. Yeah, yeah. And then we threw sofas up against the doors. Like we we barricaded it like it was a tornado was coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're literally running cash from the store out. You know, in the cars and. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of people out there, hundreds, oh. and they're all at the time we're all wearing masks. Yeah. Well, these guys got those purge masks on, and it's terrifying. Yeah. And I'm telling you, there must have been on that just corner alone hundreds of people. Did you worry somebody was going to attack you while you're putting stuff in the car? I did when uh, so I got in my car. <clears throat> I stayed as long as I felt it was safe, and then once I saw them throw the chairs and stuff right through the big window outside, and there were great neighbors that recorded for us and sent us people running up the street with two guitars at a time mm. and crackheads selling. Uh, large violin. This dude had a cello worth thousands of dollars and sold a large violin on Craigslist for like fifty bucks. That's how they caught that asshole. <laughs> wow! But um, Stradivarius on yeah, on but eBay. Uh, it was when it finally got to a point where I was like, all right, I need to get the hell out of here. I'm in my car and I'm trying to do a picture. And this guy runs up to me and he pulls out a pistol uh -oh. and he doesn't point it at me. He just holds it across his chest and he says, "Get the fuck out of here!" And I was like. Did I just get hate crime in the Black Lives Matter movement right now? Like for real? Can you do that shit? I don't know if you can do that. And that was my cue. And I drove the fuck out of there. And then that night around midnight came back and we started boarding everything up. And and they continued, by the way. We're on 19th Street. They went way the f I mean, this thing went all the way up, almost yeah. to the fucking freeway. Yeah. It looked like just, you know, uh, Beirut after being bombed. Yeah, and, and no and no cops. No cops. And the cops came. The yeah. cops came and said, if you have uh, firearms, you're allowed to exercise your Second Amendment rights. Now, I'm from Baltimore, and there's a pharmacy directly across the street from us, and those Middle Eastern dudes stood out front with their ARs, and they're, they're the nicest guys. They always come over like, let's teach the kids. I'm like, we're not going to teach the kids. But you can stand out there because, again, they all go to military. You know, they're in the oh, military right. when they're just so they're responsible. Right. So they knew the zombies were going to come for their pills and everything. So they boarded up. They were early. They were, what do you call it? Um, uh, God, proactive. Mm -hmm. They were very proactive. Um, mm -hmm. The guy at the radio place, he fired one off into the air and didn't scare a soul. Um, the guy at DK's Donuts, he had an AR. He stood out front, and he's in a, a little uh, strip mall. Mm. So they didn't bother him, but they went and ransacked the 7-Eleven. And I'm watching people walk up the street with a bottle of Jack Daniels. I'm like, that's what you're risking your life for right there, mm -hmm. that shit, you know? So uh, it was terrifying. Mm. It was hundreds of people, and um, there are just little high school girls walking by. And there's people getting stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, don't even know what's going on, and they're just walking by and bashing their windows out while they're in traffic. It was fucking insane i saw more guns on that block than i've ever seen in baltimore city and we're talking about this liberal ass santa monica trust me y'all they got them they got and, them and there. the guns were on both sides it sounds like both Every, sides yeah. absolutely yes yeah. they were yes they, and i would have to say more on the good side than the bad side because they knew they were coming hmm. and um and didn't you get somebody swing at you or something at one point no no, no. one swung at me just the gun was the pulled gun. on me yeah, yeah. that, Ugh, was, that was enough so terrible well, there was that. And then speaking of terrible, you just went through an illness, yeah. too. 
Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I just spent the month of uh, January in the hospital. The whole month, you were the, the whole hospital? month. I went in for what was billed to me as Daniel Van Kirk says, "This is my Gilligan's Island." It was billed to me as a three-hour outpatient outpatient procedure. Three-hour tour. That was it. What bro. was the procedure? It was called spinal stenosis decompression. That's what I went in. And for. didn't I give you? I gave somebody shit uh, not to do that i told somebody do, I, I know i told you not to get your low back operated on i don't know did you i didn't listen i it, you <laughs> never you never do low back for pain just don't ever do it was it pain <laughs> excruciating yeah, it's gonna come back yeah. Th that's the horrible fucked up thing about that surgery so it, it, it comes back it was something that happened to me in high school weight training class because as i've said you know I, I went listen i graduated in 91 so we're talking 87 to 91 yeah. i have weight training yeah of course it's an easy a uh, bounces out that C I get in math, so I get my 3.0, okay? <laughs> and it's all about be strong, don't be smart. Bench 300, your name's going on this wall. Squat 500, your name's going on this wall. Yeah, You're going to wear a T-shirt around school to show everybody I'm strong. Of course. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. And so many of us, I have, still have friends, have fucked our back up from squatting there because mm. we were never taught proper form. We're just young and dumb and full of cum and just putting as much weight as we can on our yeah. neck. Yeah. And just trying to drive it up to get a fucking t-shirt. Uh, too much cum in your nuts. Too much cum in my nuts. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's a great one, dude. Oh. And um, oh, when he opened me up, he told me that my nerves had hardened and started wrapping around my spine, which is why finally both legs started to go numb. I wasn't going to do this. And I, I felt that I had a good surgeon because he told me, this is surgery and I don't want to touch you unless your quality of life is affected. Okay. So... Just for everybody else out there, you only get low back surgery if you're having motor dysfunction. I, like, that, well, I started to like get like the that. muscles atrophy, oh, or you that. or you can't, you know, you get weakness of muscle. Yes. Then you got to go. Then I you, had then numbness you go. in my leg. Numbness is not what you do it for. But I had no strength in my left one, and now the right one. If you literally watch me on stage, I used to sit cock back on this hip and lay, keep the weight off of this leg. Mm. Because of the pain. Because of the pain. And, I, and it was you know, never got, waxed and waned. It was always the same. Always the same right. or worse. But right. blood flow made me feel better. I would still get out and hike. I still, yeah. actually, I still well, am active single dad that's with usually all this the pain. That's the treatment for this yeah. is walking. And that's what he said. Yeah, that but if treatment. you really have motor problem, then you have to do it. So there you go. And I headlined the Troubadour, and it was the first time in 20-some in years that I had to sit on a stool. Mm -hmm. I couldn't feel my legs. Mm -hmm. And so then I'm like, all right, I've, I, I got to go in. And I went in, and... Uh, when I get out, it's not healing properly. It's bubbling up in the back. And he said, all right, there's might be some surgical fluid or maybe there's a small tear. We, we need to open you up and look at it. Great. Open me back up. They Ugh. tell me there's a one millimeter tear. I said, well, how's that happen? They said it could have been anything. They said you were coughing a lot coming out of anesthesia. A but tear I, in your, in your I dura? In the, in I think in the surgical area, okay. wherever they did something okay. back there. Um, and now the opposite of healing is... You need to be on bed rest. Mm. But I have told everyone who will listen. It's all in my pre-op paperwork that I have Factor Five Leiden. I've learned about that because I clotted in 2016, mm. and no one would listen to me. You take, have you taken the vaccine? I have. Did you take? Did you have COVID? I forget. I did. I still can't smell. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. But but uh, I have patients with Factor Five Leiden and uh, also uh, anti-phospholipid stuff and What's those that? people did it really bad with with covid really it, these are all kind of related clotting kinds of phenomena i've had COVID twice um and the smell has been and taste obviously yeah. goes with it has mm. been the worst i yeah. i feel like knock on wood i breezed through the i didn't feel i've had worse flu mm. and you know what i mean i i was lucky you must have had omicron I had, yeah, yeah, iPhone one. Was that Omicron? The Apple one? The, they kept, it was like iPhones kept coming out. We got a new <laughs> right, variant. Like the right. iPhone four's out already. I just got the one. God damn. Um, that's how they kept popping up. But, um, but I told everyone because I knew I had this and I had, now I realize I had beat clots with no medication, no nothing. And when? this is in 2016. They kept sending me out of the hospital. I laid on my bed at night and I cried and I gave myself to the gods and I woke up in the morning in excruciating pain. So you had pulmonary emboli back then? Yeah. Yeah. I, both my legs clotted, everything. Jesus. And I was never put on blood thinners. What? So um, the um, oncologist I worked with at the time had it as well. And he said, look, this is your first 
incident. It's my belief that if we put you on blood thinners and we get you reset back to a, a healthy level, you that, could probably come off. And yeah. that's what we that's did. a reasonable thing. Unless you have a surgery or stuck in bed forever. That's what we did. And, and they didn't put you on your blood thinners while you're. And oh, I boy. told anyone who would listen, oh, boy. I have this. Don't let me lay here. It's day. You they told didn't me do three. Hair, hair, heparin injections? No. Nothing. Mm -mm. Day nine comes. They tell me I got to pass walking tests and I go to sit up and I can't. I'm so dizzy. They say, lay down. We'll do it tomorrow. And, and at this point now, I'm supposed to be there three days. I want to get the fuck out. Yeah, of course. I'm in general population and I want to get the fuck out. Yeah. You know, this girl's coming in next to me here, had a thumb surgery. She's playing music, having a good time. She's gone in two hours. I'm on day five. Yeah. I'm now sick. So the next day, I pass the walking test on a walker, and they go, great, tomorrow you have to pass a stairs test because you have stairs to get up into your home. And thank God. Thank fucking God. And uh, the, the uh, occupational therapist comes in, <clears throat> and I do the steps up. She goes, now I want you to walk sideways like you're holding on to a rail. I do that. And all the morning she's asking me, how you feeling? I go, I feel weird today. I, don't, I can't put my finger on it, but I feel weird. And as soon as the lady says the words, Mr. Sickler, as your occupational therapist, I can tell you that you have passed the necessary test to go home today. I collapse on the bed. Uh -oh. I say, I'm clotting. And uh -oh. she's like, what? I said, I'm clotting. This has happened to me before. I feel it. She runs and gets a doctor. He comes in, does my blood pressure. He says, you might be having a heart attack. And, I was, and then I almost shit myself. And I'm like, what? I go, no, I'm clotting. This has happened to me before. And he's like, keep talking to me. And then I say, oh, no. And he goes, what? I go, I'm feeling the heart attack 101. It's in my jaw. It's shooting down my arm. And then <clears throat> I black out. And that's death for me right there. I die, so to speak. I want to take a quick second to thank our sponsor for today's show, which is Sheath Underwear. Sheath makes the most comfortable boxer briefs ever. If you're sick of boxers that are too loose or briefs that are too tight, Sheath is for you. They're the best. You have to get one pair, get one pair, and it's going to change your life. The most comfortable boxer briefs you will ever put on your body. The stretchy fabric is made with moisture wicking technology, super soft, keep everything cool and comfortable and in the right place. The most unique thing about sheath underwear is that they have dual pouches that keep your parts separated. You'll see what I mean. It prevents things from sticking together, keeps them right where they need to be. And when I first started trying this pouch, I was like, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So go to sheathunderwear.com and get the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. If you use our promo code after dark, you will also get 20% off your order. That is sheathunderwear.com, promo code after dark for 20% off your order. I wake up with this nice little nurse over my face. And for whatever reason, I still said, am I going home today? Oh. <laughs> and she said, was it no. Was it the same day? Your discharge <laughs> has been canceled. And they wheel me to CT scans. And they tell me that my heart has swollen mm. and that normally your heart pumps two thirds, one third, but mine's 50 50 and it's an issue. And I have massive pulmonary embolisms it's, covering that's my lungs. Of the, the pressure from that, yeah. And they tell me it's touch and go for about 48 hours mm. and I need to make phone calls and it's real. Mm. And I'm calling people. I call my daughter's mother. I'm like, look, there. I might any die. thought? Did they give any thought to going in and dissolving the clot? Yeah. So they did, but they said they they could put a tube about the size of the pinky into my groin, up into my lungs, and suck them out. But because of the factor five, that could make me brain bleed and be a vegetable. And I was like, well, then that's off the list. We're not even going to do that. So they decided to treat me as they said, the same way they've treated people for fifty or sixty years. Just put you on blood thinner. So first it was IV blood thinner. Then uh. it then it became the stomach, yep. and they told me I could not leave until I could orally take them and accept them. So every day, as you'll know, they will test my blood. And if there's anything different, it's two more fucking days. Because mm -hmm. now I've got to fast, mm -hmm. and then they want to test my blood again. So every day that something comes back, I'm getting more and more pissed. Because mm -hmm. they're like, you're going home tomorrow. You might go home tomorrow. So I made them put it on my dry erase board. Don't fucking tell me I'm going home tomorrow. And stop telling me what else could happen. Because like, well, you could stroke. And I was like, oh, my. When they said the stroke, because I was like, look, if I can't walk, I could still do this job. Yeah. If I stroke, I can't do this right. job. I can't do stand up. I can't even podcast. I could yeah. do this from a wheelchair if I had to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but not from the stroke. So it's a month of. I mean, I laid on my back for thirty days. It's awful. Um, I can't tell. My neck is just starting to feel better now. Just hold my big head up and. I didn't realize how much your shoulders weigh. When I would podcast at first, my shoulders are just pulling down yeah, yeah. naturally. I'm like, God, killing my neck. Oh. I had no ass. I had nothing. <laughs> and if I could log roll 
and sit up, <clears throat> excuse me, and wait 30 seconds to not get dizzy and take my walker and go as far as that monitor to sit and pee and get back in my bed, dude, I just ran the New York City Marathon. Yeah. That was a good day for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's been a long uphill battle. I am so sorry you went yeah, through that. That is you. awful. But I'm, uh, it's a miracle that you are where you are. But these are still here yep. in my lungs. That's what I learned. I didn't um, know that It depends. your body uh, gets rid of them. I yeah. thought the blood thinners cured them, but they said, no, that cures new. That prevents new ones. Correct. What you have, you got to dance and with who you're brung. Right. And it, it depends whether how, how far on the periphery they get and how lodged they are. And if they lodge and cut the blood supply off completely, then the lung tissue dies downstream. You get what's called an infarct. And a what? Pulmonary infarct. Oh, infarction. Is a C like, in there? I thought infarction. you said infarct. Okay, infarct. <laughs> large okay. volume fart. There you go. Large <laughs> volume fart. There you infarction. Go. Uh, but even then, you're you know the, the real problem with lung tissue is if you if you oxygenate it, but but um, rather if you put if you put blood through it but don't oxygenate it, that's how the blood goes back dis unoxygenated. But if the lung just not there, you're fine. Okay. Before. Well, I've had people message me and be like, "Yeah, I've had the same thing." And it's common. Well, it and was now I got to be open back up for scar tissue. I'm like, oh, "What?" Back there in the lungs, they're talking about like pulmonary embolisms because of the scarring from their lungs. They were having issues breathing later in oh, life. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they, it's different. Oh it's different. god, they'll take out pieces of the lungs for that. Oh but, for God's but, sake! All right, let's. Uh, Whew. Let's uh, take some calls and uh, and then after don't let me forget to talk about Jason Ellis yeah. and the baby and the asshole. Yes, please. Yeah, you you guys are intrigued by that baby and the asshole, baby in the rectum. Uh, I'd like to hear more. You, you will, don't you worry. Hold on a second. Let's, I won't let you down the dog. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's talk. This is kind of interesting. Let's talk to Tim. Uh, be interesting. Hey Tim, what's going on? Hello. Hey Tim. Not bad. Hey, I'm a big fan, and uh, if Ryan's there telling the special was awesome. Thank you, Tim. He's I am here. here. He is here. What's up? All right. So um, I am diagnosed with the bipolar type schizoaffective disorder, mm -hmm. and recently I lost my job. I had a really bad psychotic episode, mm -hmm. and I can't afford much, so I'm looking for a new job, and everything I'm finding is either shift work or night shift. Yeah. And my psychiatrist thinks that's a really bad idea. I agree. And online, it all says that it's bad. So I didn't no. know what your thoughts were. Oh, I completely agree. Because he has, he has a delicate chemistry. Uh, and and thing, nighttime is something that'll... Screwing your sleep-wake cycles up will precipitate trouble. With, really? With this kind of... It's sort of he's sort of fragilely bipolar. What, what happened during your psychotic episode? What were you thinking or saying? Um, it was a uh, very, uh, paranoid. Mm -hmm. I thought that everyone was trying to kill me. Mm -hmm. Um, work actually sent me home one day because I was hallucinating and talking to hallucinations at work. Mm -hmm. And I worked in a heavy duty chemical factory. Mm -hmm. So they sent me home. Um, I kept trying to go back and they said I had to get checked out. Sure. I was very, um, uh, aggressive and kind of mean mm -hmm. and then could you have the thing that led to me actually having to be hospitalized was i'm sorry go ahead finish that uh, i uh i who i thought there were people in my house and they kept saying and they were hallucinations but they kept saying that i was going to kill my family or they were going to kill me and i had to make a decision on what i was going to do and i got super uncomfortable and anxious so i ran out of my house and ran all the way through town on the road and my mom found me and she had to take me to the hospital close on close off close on it's good we get manic right that sometimes they throw their clothes off it's a very common kind of thing and and did you shave your head that's another really characteristic really? manic behavior i've done all these things <laughs> no, actually yeah <laughs> you're not I, alone uh, tim <laughs> my well, actually, my hair was dyed black, mm. and I, I mean, for me, that's kind of weird. I've never dyed my hair before. Right, right. And I just, I wasn't sleeping at all. Right, I wasn't, right. So is there a way, really when, eating, now how, that you, you speak very frankly about your psychotic episode, and you understand what it is, and you understand what happened, do you think next time, should there be a next time, you'll be able to seek help sooner, or see the symptoms, or are you just so in it when it happens, somebody else has got to help you? 
Yeah, so that's it feels like the more severe the episode I'm in, um, the harder it is for me to see it. Yeah, of course. So what's uh, a what's yeah. a like occupation even now so. on Medicare? He can live normally, normally. But I mean, what's a good job? I mean, with, with landscaping him. outside in no, the no, day? He, he literally can do anything, but you can't do the re- not reverse, night shifts. not the sleep wake Okay, course, so that. day job only, yeah. no night shifts. Yeah, I mean, I should No graveyard be, shifts. No, correct. I mean, occasional kind of thing, but even then, it, it's, it was a bad enough episode that particularly for the next six months or so. How, how long ago was the episode? Uh, it was... I got out of the hospital a month ago, and I'm still having small symptoms. Now. Yeah, yeah. So you got to wait about six months for this stuff. And I always think about these bad episodes as like seizures. You know, you literally, if, so people can understand what's happening. The brain is just consumed by this thing, and it's it's like having somebody whose brain is seizing, but it has a very specific set of uh, symptoms associated with it. So yeah, uh, I'm afraid Tim, I agree that uh, you've got to find other work. Uh, you sound like a good guy. You sound like you're quite capable. And I, my suspicion is you'll find something. Okay. Thank All right. you. All right. You got it. And take your medicine. This is the kind of illness that got to take the medicine. It's vitally important. Yeah. It's, it's not a psychological thing. There's no talking people with this one. This is, this is a, like, but, and by the way, interestingly, we use anti-epileptic therapy to treat it. Oh, is that right? We actually use seizure medication. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hey, this is uh, Tyler, North Carolina. Tyler, what's up? Hey, Hitler. Hey, Sickler. How are we doing? Hitler, Good, buddy. Sickler. How Hitler and that? Sickler. How about that wow. call? <laughs> Woo! That's a sitcom. <laughs> love, love my name right after Hitler. That's and by great. the way, Ty- uh, Tyler, hang on a second. <laughs> Have you ever seen the? I think I've made these guys look it up before. The the TV series. Hey, Heil, honey, I'm home. <laughs> no, that's real. It's real. Oh, I'm- I've seen the clip from the show. Hile, honey, I'm home. I don't think that's it. Was it's Hile, honey, I'm home. It's Hile, honey, I'm home. Look up Hile, honey, I'm home. Was it an American show? Uh, I think... Is this like Hogan's it, it, Heroes? Yes, exactly. But I think it might have been British. Look, Hile, honey, I'm home. Holy and it has a go- goofy sit... Can we play the the uh, theme song? Nope. The wacky <laughs> wacky Hitler and Ava Braun. Are there, they're, you know. Nah. Yes, yes. Go. Can you play the theme this song? song? This not- aired? I think it was British. I think it was a British thing. Most Jim Jeffries turned me on to this. He goes, oh, yeah, we had it in Australia. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Maybe you look starring Neil McCall as Adolf. Oh, <laughs> God. It's crazy. He got really typecast after this one probably. I'll bet. Can, can you – I don't know if you can play the – can you play the it's theme copyright. song? Just play the few seconds. You'll cut it out. People okay. can go look it up. But I, I need Ryan to hear it. It was there. It was there in the uh, – okay. Uh – it's up at the top. Oh, God damn it. There's a, there's sure a sitcom right. theme music for... Oh, no, uh, it's, <laughs> it's Heil Honey, Heil Honey. No. Yes, Jesus I swear to God. Christ. You'll die. There, there it is at the, where the building <laughs> is. The building down t- there. That's it. Heil Honey. No. Heil Honey. Heil Honey. Heil Honey. Hello. I'm home. <laughs> Hile I can't honey. believe it. Who said yes to this? There's so many yeses that go yeah, into the making of the show. I know. There are hundreds of well, yeses. I'm sure they were like, hey, we just made a wacky Ooh. sitcom about a concentration camp. <laughs> why can't we have a Flintstones with, a high, you know, why you know Hitler? That was, it's the Flintstones. There's a neighbor. The, the two neighbors come over all the time. They're Jewish. And Ava Braun and Hitler are having issues with the neighbors, you know. So here you go. Good times. Uh, no shit. You can you can thank uh, Jim Jeffries for that and me, right. Uh, Ryan. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, okay, this is uh, Milton from Kansas. Oh wait, no, I had Tyler. I'm second. Sorry, Milton. Hang on a second, Tyler. Go ahead. You're still up. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I was calling in. Uh, I just turned thirty not too long ago. Yeah. Uh, and when I was four years old, I uh, had uh, testicular torsion. And had to have a testicle removed. So torsion is it twists on itself, mm-hmm. cuts its blood supply off. Mm-hmm. Okay, that must have been fun. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. From what I remember, it was a lot of fun. Not being able to mm. breathe and worrying the shit out of my parents. Oh my gosh, <laughs> terrible. Sorry. But uh, yeah, no, no. It, you know, it happens. To, not happens to the best. But it happens every now and then. Yes, it does. Can, but, can I? <laughs> can I ask you? It's Tyler. Yeah. 
Tyler, I've heard of yeah. things called nexticles. Do you have any like thing in your ball bag, like the weight or anything to simulate well, they, they a put testicle? Some prosthetics in there. They do. Yeah. Is it really called a nexticle? Uh, <laughs> I've no. They used to use like acrylic ones, and now they have sort of. And latex is it just ones. for weight? Is it just well, cosmetics too? It's just yeah. cosmetic. Yeah. Okay. Nexticle. There it do is. Do you have one of those, Tyler? Nexticle is at oh, Puerto I Escondido don't, Beach. Don't. <laughs> my, my ball bag hangs down like probably Doctor Drew's does, but. <laughs> does it look like a rosin bag? You know what I mean? Or has it got two balls? That, like, is there two things in it? No, no. It's just like a just like a punching bag in a gym. Just one single one hanging real low. Speed, uh, speed, speed bag. bag. Speed bag. My ball bag and pee pee. <laughs> so, Tyler, what's the question? <laughs> well, uh, I just wanted to see. Uh, I know that. I know uh, the Tom and Bert have been doing it a lot lately, and now that they've gotten closer to their fifties, and I just wanted to ask about uh, testosterone therapy and yeah. if that's going to affect anything. If maybe I should take a look at that earlier rather than later. Uh, I am, and just wanted your opinion on. It. Uh, I am a fan of testosterone therapy, but I don't think it should be used quite as indiscriminately as it is, and it really should only be used to restore normal physiological levels. And you can produce plenty of testosterone with one test. You don't need two. Okay, so it's unlikely that your levels are going to be so low. It does happen, however. So you might want to just get your testosterone checked. And if it's low, then boost it. There's no problem. I have two questions. Yeah. I'm going to piggyback on you here, Tyler. Yeah. I was on the testosterone bus long before Tom and Bert were. When my daughter was being born, I had was using it. But then I was like, but it said shit like, don't touch people. It was a cream. I had oh, a cream. Yeah. I yeah, rubbed yeah. on my arm. Yeah, a androgel. And um, now I'm reading that because of what I have. That's going to make it worse. It can, right? So yeah. I should not fuck no. with testosterone because no. that's prone to clots uh -huh. as well. Well, let's think about it. You're going to be on blood thinners, right? You're already on. Are you on Eliquist? Or I'm on Eliquist twice a and, day. And so, you know, you possibly could be on it, but you just you definitely don't want to go above normal levels, though. You want to stay I mean, normal, I don't, normal. I don't really need to fuck with it. Then don't. I mean, as long as I get my blood panel done and my testosterone levels are in the norm, I shouldn't be messing with, it, with really. what the, I have. The thing, about the thing about hormones generally and testosterone specifically is normal levels, what's normal is really wide. You know, we don't, what's normal for you is really the question, but somewhere between 400 and 1200. And maybe you as a kid were always 900 or 1000, and now you're 400. Is that abnormal? We, we don't really know. And we also don't know what you were when you were a kid. We, really, we can guess that's what right. it was. And should an older gentleman be at 900 again? Or, I, you know, we don't know the full physiological effects. But I am definitely only in favor of replacement. I'm in favor of estrogen replacement. I'm in favor of thyroid replacement. And I'm in favor of testosterone replacement. So je definitely get your level checked. Can I ask one more question yeah. about Tyler? Tyler, yeah. do you have children? I don't yet. Good question. Okay, can he? But, it will but affect the us. One I have, the one I have is my left nut. So uh, my kid's going to be lefty son, too. I <laughs> Watch my special on YouTube, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for that plug, Tyler. But wait, can he still have? Is the left one the one? I've always heard or understood oh, the left one I to be wait. the baby producing testicle. Is that false? I don't, I don't, I've never seen any evidence that it's both. So both. You, you could have a right testicle only and still have oh, a baby? Yes. Okay, oh, yes. so he's in no law, he's in no jeopardy of not having a child with one testicle. Well, if he takes the testosterone, however, it could suppress the, the sperm yeah. production. I remember my balls getting smaller yeah. and I didn't like it. Mm. I've been touching my like, balls for a long time. I didn't time. like that either. I didn't like it either. Yeah, I don't like it. I've got Good luck, my Tyler. Self, a cock problem. <laughs> Tyler, thanks, buddy. Hey. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to get Milton up here. Wow. Wow. Just saying. <laughs> Milton. Oh, I tried to get him up here. Let's try it again. Oh, God darn it. There we go. Milton, what's up? Hey, how's it going? High and tight. What's happening? So my question is, is there a difference between having a cold sore and herpes? So like, if you have a cold sore, is that immediate? Like, oh, you have herpes? I think you might as well assume that's what it is because most cold sores are kind of a herpes virus. They are in the usually they're milder than the type two, but the type two can the type two can occur in either place now routinely too. Is that right? Yeah, and type one, if you have an outbreak, could be transmitted to somebody's genitalia. Can I ask you a herpes question, please? My I see my mom have cold sores on her around her mouth. Yeah, yeah. Now I came out of her vagina. 
can that pass to a child? Yeah. Yes, but it's it's not it's not like genital herpes. Then it gets in the eyes. It's, it gets in the skin. It can be a big mess. And so usually, and by the way, n- not from oh that would be genital herpes. For, from an oral herpes, no. I it's mean, not she, just in the body no, and you're no, with no, no, all no. the you, fluid and everything wrong. going on in a pregnancy. You, you have to have an open sore I down see. in the okay. vagina as the baby's moving through and be okay. directly exposed. And, uh, of course, if you're kissing the baby with a cold sore, you might transmit something over that way. But, My mom definitely didn't do that. So. It's just, it just points out <laughs> how much we make of this thing that's really a nothing. Mm-hmm. We make so much out of herpes and it's just a, a cold sore. It's yeah, so but weird. it just looks so ugly. You know, I think that's what it is. It's on our face and people are very insecure is it i'm insecure about my face with no herpes on it i couldn't imagine having herpes but on most it. of them and then you put carmex and shit on it that shit's like armor off but you're talking about the ones you're outside shining up. you were on the, and on the that's lip. why my wife wants to leave me <laughs> <laughs> don't shine it up bro <laughs> don't go for the shiny tires go for that flat black you know what i mean <laughs> and, and the cold sores <laughs> i'm glad milton's very good nature about it. that my wife wants to leave so, so you're talking about but the little well, ones. She in, does. Well, we'll get in that in a second. Hold on. That's the little sores inside the mouth. You know, I little see. canker sores. Yeah, that's little, herpes. Can be. Yeah. Oh, I didn't Often know that is. either. Uh, so, Milton, what uh, what's going on with your wife? Well, I just found out a month ago, and we've been together for the past seven years. I've never had an outbreak, but I remember having one back in middle school. So. That was herpes in too. I never yeah. even kissed anybody. It, that's so why. That's why. That's why blood tests are so stupid. Everyone's been exposed to herpes. But he makes a great point. He's never kissed any. N- oh, no sexual activity. It come, in seventh it grade. come off a fork or something. For real? Yeah. yeah. Jesus yeah, they're Christ. They're common. They're really common. They're crazy common. Like most people have. Oral... I, I do forget that we go to restaurants and we're using a fork that probably five hundred people have yeah. used in that week or something. I do forget about stuff that like shit. that. There's a million ways you can get these things. Jesus. And uh, and your wife is literally. So what kind of test can I give my wife for te- her to know if she has it? Well, when you have a full blown outbreak, yeah. have sex with her, and if she doesn't get it, oh, then that's a good test, man. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I would not do that. But but you, if she doesn't have symptoms, forget it. You know what I'm saying? If she has no symptoms, okay. so, it doesn't hurt. She doesn't have irritation. She doesn't have. Well, sores. has she ever had an outbreak? No, she's never had an outbreak. That's what I'm asking. Like, is there a test but, that gives concrete proof? But Dr. Drew's an saying you give a test. We probably all have it in that case. Yeah, then. the blood test, we all turn up positive. But if you if she has an outbreak, then you do a culture, and that tells you for sure. But oftentimes, the outbreak itself. Okay, so here's, go ahead. Go ahead. Here's. So I've had tests before in the past, and it came back negative. Well, that's amazing. Very, very doesn't even make sense uh, because we know you have. Yeah, so if I take another test and it comes back negative, I show it to my wife. We're all good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, what's she freaking out about? I don't, I don't understand. You just have a cold sore in your or mouth. Or does right? she think you cheated on her? Is well, that that's what what she's... disgusting? It's disgusting. So then, I mean, oh yeah, she does, does think. She does think that. Yeah, no, well, that would that. make... I mean, look, you guys, if you're that. married, you're going to grow <laughs> old together. There's going to be a lot of disgusting body things you see as you grow older, but uh, I'm my guess is she thinks you're cheating on her yeah. and all of a sudden you have yeah. herpes. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean... Got the blood test or so. All right, get the blood test. And if that's negative, then that's a pretty good, pretty good indication. But then and why would you get a cold sore if that's negative? It's other, some other virus. So other viruses that aren't herpes can Evidently. actually give you cold sores? Yeah, no I mean, shit. I'm not an expert in that so area, but that. let's, should we look it up? See, let's, let's look this up quickly. What else causes cold sores? That's what sores? I'm going to find out. Cold sores. And let's see. It's, it's probably another kind of herpes virus, just not the kind that we test for. Uh, spread in various ways, treatment, blah, blah, blah. Self-diagnosed. Oral herpes, it says, blah, blah. Does, uh, does it mean you have herpes? Cold sores are caused by a virus called herpes simplex. <laughs> Once you have the virus, it stays in your skin the rest of your life. Sometimes it causes a cold sore. Most people are exposed when they're very young, close skin contact. That's it. And so you can just look up the, look up the uh, just do it on Dr. Google. It shows right up. On what? Go- Dr. Google. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> we got a Googler back here, you know. What's this? Oh, nothing. Oh, up there. There it is. Oh, my gosh. How about yeah, you that? know, you never need a Google on your phone. You, whenever you do that, I just start Googling over All here. Right, fair it's enough. literally Nadav's job here. One of them. 
I didn't know he had a job. I'm so <laughs> yeah. confused. Of course I do. I thought his job was to laugh at us. I do want to get deep uh, into your ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, of speaking of that, I was watching the, yeah, the Honeydew great segue. The Honeydew podcast. Great segue. And you were talking to Jason Ellis, yes, a dear friend of mine. Wonderful Jason Ellis. Who's yes. been having like real struggle lately, and I've mm-hmm. been very worried about Jason. Me too. But you guys and there's one thing what he's breaking up with his wife of many years, someone he loved very much. And they had this very open relationship. Very well. I don't mean to correct you, but he, on his end, open for him was very. The way he explained it was she may take one other partner a year. Well, they would go to sex clubs. Yeah. Well, that's what he said. They would do I'm just I think I think he's thinking more in terms of sort of ongoing stuff, maybe. I see. Yes. Because they would do a lot of wild stuff. In, in any event, uh, I knew them both well. And I've always said, you know, this just doesn't work ever. People, something, feelings emerge that you can't anticipate. And uh, but for years I thought, well, maybe maybe here's an exception. Maybe these two can pull it off. Turns out even them, even they can't do it. So I'd be careful. But if you're having opening your relationship, it, it doesn't go well. I can tell you there are would, armies of people, armies of people trying to make two people stay in, get together in a relationship. You had a third or a fourth, forget it. Everything just becomes way too unpredictable and chaotic, and really it usually breaks down around some unexpected feeling either some unexpected jealousy or some ex- unexpected attachment to somebody. And that's sort of what started happening with Jason, I think. And then Katie was out because of that, right? Isn't, am I getting that right? Yeah, he was Yeah, into some people. Yeah, but one of his people uh, put mm-hmm. a baby up his asshole. Yeah, so he explained that, I, and again, I, you got to love gay men. Uh, he said he had this like rubber baby, this the t- two men. Like like a like a dildo baby? No, like a, like a baby, like a rubber baby. I don't know how big, I, I can't. And, and <laughs> he said, the guy said, would you like his, to his partner? The, his, his partner said, would you like to put this up your ass? <laughs> and the gay guy said, of course I would. Because that's what gay guys are about. Wait, wait, hold on. So Jason asked that of the no, guy? No, 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 no. This is two people he's talking about. This had two nothing he to do knows. with Jason two, else. Two, yes. two of his cohorts. It's a story he's just telling me about two Got people it. he knows. Guy A, guy B. Guy A says, hey, you want to put this baby up your butt? Guy B's like, there it is. Guy yeah. yeah, guy B is like fuck yeah, I want to put that baby up my butt. And he said when he when he went to put it up his ass, something happened where the ass just <laughs> sucked it up way up into him. Happens a lot. And then they couldn't get the baby out. Of course. Then he swears <laughs> that the doctors had to go in and perform a C-section <laughs> to get a, a real C-section to get a fake baby out of this guy's ass. <laughs> and I'm like, there's no fucking way. There's no way. C- correct. <laughs> they, 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 you have to have a uterus to yeah. do a C-section. And, and what they did was they opened his, they went into his colon. Much like my diverticulitis, where I were, okay. and where you've had your surgery, that's where the baby but was. But they really oh, are yeah. still cutting them open. Oh, though, they cut them open. The oh, yeah, that happens more than you'd imagine. <sighs> oh, for not just for stuff. all kinds of foreign bodies that go way up high, and, and they have to cut you open. They can't get them out. Gaping them anus. Out. <laughs> there are all kinds of procedures now with you know scopes and things they can do, yeah. and uh, but off, sometimes stuff gets just anchored up there, and there's no way. And can't. you got to get it out like that. You, and because it'll it'll erode right through the wall of the colon if you don't get there quick. Oh. Fuck. And so, uh, hey, good times. Uh, but I watch your show, and I've watched your wife and you talking about, um, and I've read it a bunch, that it happens often where a woman may leave a tampon or not even yeah. realize it one's up in her. And to me, it made more sense to go get the tampon that way than it would a baby up your ass. Y- Just you, biologically. Y- y- the good news about the vagina, it is open to the outside world. So you just reach up and get it. The, the thing about surgery is it's when you have to go inside the body. Do you understand what mm-hmm, I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had to go inside and then open the colon, which is outside. This is how I have to coach these guys up all the time. You, from here to there mm-hmm. is outside the body. It's just a tube. It runs. Oh, it's through. considered outside. It, Why? Because there's two exits. No, it runs through your body, but it's full of all kinds of horrible bacteria and stuff. It's not in because your. It's, it's, not, it's a tube. It's not like a kidney that's in there. And exactly. Stays, got exactly. It. And, right, and okay. the vagina is outside the body. Okay. The uterus is inside, inside the, body, the body for the most part. So it's it's, it's the one sort of in betweeny kind of organ, but uh, it's really inside the body. And then you have to operate on that to get to the, the <sighs> babies. Usually, no. the vagina is not is designed for semen. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I agree with myself. Not a great. One. So let me. I agree with myself. Let's take some uh, some emails here. <laughs> then I want to do a couple of videos. Uh, wife there are not I'm a be- lot of cool Jews. 
Sorry, I'm just going crazy back here. I love it. Don't stop. Uh, together with my wife for six years. She knows I like to drink. I've cut back mostly a social drink. She doesn't, however, know that I do cocaine. Uh, <laughs> That's around two to three times a month. Okay. Oh, weekly. It doesn't affect... Right, that's weekly. It doesn't affect my day-to-day. I've never prioritized the use of alcohol or anything else. I sometimes feel guilty for not telling her reasonably. Uh, my life, my last relationship where I was uh, super open book never worked. I feel it's my healthiest relationship because we don't impose knowing every detail but are still best friends. I'm scared she will judge me. I'll lose her. She has never done drugs. Uh, I'll tell myself I'll just quit. It'll be a non-issue, but it's hard. And I still have not dropped the habit. Any advice? Well, dude, he has no name here. Uh, home here now, he says. Uh, you have burgeoning addictive pathology here. It's not bad. I mean, you're, you're sort of you're starting to get some momentum with alcohol and cocaine, and it is affecting your life, and yet you still can't stop. That's how you measure addiction. Not so much by how much you use, but by its effect on you, and in spite of the effect, it continues to roll on, okay? I also, you and I were touching briefly on this before we started recording, and not to sound like an old man, but that cocaine- It's hard for you not to. Is gonna be, yeah, I'm not <laughs> 50 now. <laughs> that cocaine's gonna be the death of you, brother. These yeah, cocaine days, causes heart attacks, strokes, uh, intracranial and fe- bleeds. I'm talking about the fentanyl. And they put fentanyl that's, in all that's that. That's the thing. Yep. Like, God forbid yep. your wife comes home, and the way she finds out that you did weekly cocaine is you're dead on the floor at the house, so- yep. Uh, I would worry more about the fentanyl these days, honestly, yeah. than the addiction. And if you're really having to test a drug to see if it's safe so you can use it, then you're 100% addicted. I like to use the cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it, it's it's one of these things where he clearly has that genetic potential for addiction. And it's sort of, you can pay me now or you pay me later, right? So you, if you get it under control now and stop, you don't have to take treatment. But if it gets out of control and you can't stop, then that's the time when you've got to really dedicate a lot of time and energy to stopping. Why not get it under control now? And in terms of telling your wife, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think she I think she should know that you're doing some stuff that's kind of dangerous. I, and the reason you aren't going to tell her is because you know she's going to react badly. And that's why you're not telling her. So why don't you just see if you can stop before you lose... Control. Everything. Yeah, everything. Exactly. Your life included. No, this is exactly the point. That That's where this goes. All right. I've been with my husband for 20 years. He just turned 40. Uh, I've caught him with porn a few times. I've always hated porn. I don't look like a porn star. I put a lot of weight on, then lost it, so my skin is gross. My boobs aren't where they used to be. I feel like I'm not good enough, so he watches porn because the porn stars are hot. So... Oh my God! So this is grow uh, up, lady. Yeah, this is what women do: is they compare themselves against what the guy's looking at. He's with you because he wants to be with you. He loves you. He likes you. Everything good about you, he is with. He's porn is like a, a separate profession. It's a separate thing that he does. He's been doing it since he was thirteen, right? He and what he looks at is what he likes in porn, not necessarily what he likes in real life. It also doesn't mean that he likes to watch other people fuck. It just means he likes to watch this particular thing. He might be an ass man. He might be a titty man. He might be, I don't know, maybe he's into watching porn of Latin girls. Who right. knows? And or has, short women and, and, or whatever. The right, it might have nothing to do with nothing. his attractions in real world. Also, so, if you're intimidated by porn, maybe watch one together, a, yep. a soft one together. She'll, she'll have t- I can tell she'd have trouble. I, I, yeah, yeah, she said she, hate was the word yeah, she used. Yeah, she hates so, it. Yeah. Uh, but you need to settle down because uh, men have had a, you know, 40 year old males had a habit since he was 13. And that, that don't stop. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you, and plus, if you, um, I don't, I would like to know how often they're having sex, that kind of thing. I mean, you can, I was jerking off before the internet and it has not stopped. <laughs> it has not stopped. Has it gotten worse because yeah. of the internet? Because uh, a lot of stuff is so uh, uh, arousing. Well, I mean, it's gotten more, you know, like I, we just, it's so funny. Back in the day, maybe in the woods, some older brother left a booby magazine. Yes. And then it in started the, did you that. You say in the woods? In the woods. That's the third yeah. time somebody mm-hmm. has said that. Always to somebody me about would have, in the woods. A, we'd have a fort or something. If you ever there. see a young male running around in the woods, they're, they're, he's on the hunt. He's He's looking for he's something. Horny as he's, shit. he's hoping he finds a magazine. If he's, he's in the not, trash can for behind the else. liquor store, he's looking for a magazine. That's what he's doing. Yeah, the woods. It would be the woods. Um, actually, the first time I saw boobs, man, you're giving me a real flashback. Was a Playboy, mm-hmm. and it was from a a girl. Her, but we hung out with her brother. Her, she found her dad's Playboy and gave it to us. Oh boy! And so then we start looking at that. 
And then it becomes the natural, like, I, I got to say, I enjoyed the way I grew up because it was a boob, a hand on the boob over the sweater. Yeah. Then under the sweater, but over the bra. And then once you touch skin, you're like, oh, my God, <laughs> pants was another world. And now my daughter, who's here, could go to fisting.com. Yeah, and, you no. know, so I'm very worried yeah. about the a, what, what she's going to, because that first image can be burned in forever. So... For males, I'm a, I have a theory that what they see between like 11 and 14, and it's different, that sort of that window is different for different guys, but that becomes their th their preference. They sort of, they, again, much like this guy watching his porn, probably started right there. Where so 11 to 14 is where I became an ass man? That's where it started. Mm. Well, you, do you remember who was uh, some of your images I, that you look, still remember? It's so funny. I remember boobs more. I remember a girl, if you want to bring her up, Samantha Fox. Do you remember Samantha Fox? No. She, was a, she was a British singer and she was an uh artist uh singer i should say right. samantha fox and she had a song called naughty girls need love too there she is that white one right there was iconic that white top uh and then she um did penthouse i think it was oh boy with her top off and i hid that magazine between my um mattress and my box spring in an envelope uh, and it <laughs> uh, went in a manila envelope just so when you picked it up you didn't immediately see it you know like oh, that's probably nothing i'll just leave that there yeah samantha uh -huh. fox titties i saw for i don't remember the first ass i saw but i really i would say even though i love titties i would say i'm more of an ass man that's something but porn didn't i mean dot com porn didn't get to me until you couldn't jerk off the dot com porn at first because it would have to load buffer i'm like jesus christ i forget this shit yeah, and also I i'm, I'm old people. enough to remember the spice channel do you remember the spice channel i remember i don't remember ever looking at it but i remember the it term. was full porn yeah. without penetration or finishing and, and wasn't it something you needed like a box for you like did. Yeah, you need yeah. a scrambler box yeah. and it was everything without seeing penetration or finishing um Crazy. And also, we would be at a friend's house, and we would watch that TV. We, if we caught a nipple in the scramble, we were stoked. So what, what Ryan's stoked. talking about is he would literally look at fuzz, like yeah. brr, the TV's. And, but but if you could get that Spice Channel, I don't know how they how did they get it with the oh oh it was the without the box without you could, the you box could it get scramble you was scrambled and you and, might you might get a yeah, frame yeah you yeah, might yeah, yeah. You oh might. guys just like looking through the woods you'd you'd, you'd be carefully yeah <laughs> looking at looking the spice for those channel. magazines. All right, one more email, then we're going to go to some uh, videos here. I've heard a lot about milking the prostate. I have a gay friend, which is in the line of the, the C-section baby. Mm -hmm. uh, gay friend swears by it, totally straight, don't mind butt play. Uh, ba, ba, ba. My girlfriend has tried a couple times without success. We have vibrating butt plugs that we both use, but it, as it feels good, it's not the prostate orgasm I'm hoping to achieve. What is the proper technique? I, I, again, back to Jason, I've heard him extol the virtues of this. Uh, not, it's not for everybody. Some men have a lot of pain with that. It's just uncomfortable. You got any techniques? Uh, I don't have any techniques, but I had it done to me recently. Um, and Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, and I got to say, <laughs> I'm going to be honest about all of it. <clears throat> <laughs> I expect nothing less. It was interesting feeling at first, and then I felt like I had to shit everywhere. And right. I was like, no, 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 no. Hold yeah. on. Just hold on. Let me go to the restroom again, and I'll use the bidet again and see if I can't give myself an enema there and just clear everything yeah. out. Yeah. And when she took her finger out, it felt like a shit all over the bed. And did I was you? Like, oh, I was humiliated, but I did not. Oh, it good. was just the lube finger coming out. Oh, but good. I'm telling you, it felt like but powered on. <laughs> now, I went back for it. I was like, look, I'm into this. That's I right. want to try it's, it, it's... but I just want to be comfortable as any woman would want to be. Uh -huh. And uh, she went for it. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> it happened. It was a different orgasm. You didn't have any penile stimulation. Oh, uh, a little, a little. Um, but then I started penile simulation. Okay. I was just right. stroking myself. Okay. And normally, I know when my orgasm's yeah. coming. I feel this build. It, yeah. There's a crescendo and a yep. bah. Finish me off. Yep, finish me off. But this was, it seemed to happen before I felt like it was, I don't mean pun intended, Well, I mean, you're, you're pushing on the nerves to the penis there that go along the base Bro, of the prostate. So I fucking decorated that wall okay. behind so, me. But, so it was good. Oh, man. So it was good. It fucking shot. Like, I watched it go by me. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, holy crap. <laughs> It had real torque and power, you know what I mean? It just went, 
And I was like, oh, it shit. makes sense because I mean, the more you, the more you, first of all, the prostate is where the fluid comes from, mm-hmm, right? And that mm-hmm. starts to accumulate seminal, seminal fluid. vesicles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and you're hitting the, the nerves there. So that's going to have all a different kind of a feeling associated with it. So congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. But I do have gay friends and I've asked them the same thing. You're yeah. telling me with no penis yeah. simulation, you can still have an orgasm like you can. And you can, yeah. apparently. Yeah, it, apparently. I don't know if it feels as good. Yeah, but Jason liked biologically, it. he keeps talking can. about it. Yeah, it was wild. All right, so I'll go back for another finger up the butt. Videos out there you got uh, a little horrible or hilarious for us. Yeah, tell me if this is uh, horrible or hilarious to okay, you. Okay, Ryan, here you go. Uh oh. Describe what you're seeing. They seem to be positioning a pipe in a, in a ditch. Big trench. There's a construction worker down there by themselves. A big long white pipe. It's a deep hut. Looks like maybe a 20 feet deep. Oh, easy. Yeah. Positioning that pipe. Oh, oh my no. God. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, my God. So the whole wall <laughs> caved in on him. Cool, is right? horribly hilarious allowed? <laughs> is, is, is that, is, do we know anything about where this went so I can make it hilarious, or was it not good? Uh, I not mean, great. They probably dug him out. Not great. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Was he was he breathing when they dug him out? Is the question. You better climb uh, in that, that tube. In, that <laughs> information is not available to us. Well, that looked horrible. That that was yeah. That was horrible. Right, that whole thank you wall for collapsed. Yep. Twenty foot. <sighs> oh my god. That's a nightmare. Being buried alive. Oh, oh fucking god, help we me. We had a no guy. Way. We no. they have a video of a guy doing doing crawling through tiny spaces in mm-hmm. a cave. It was uh, who was I with? We, uh, neither of us could look at it. Oh yeah, yeah, here I can pull it up right oh, now. Oh god, this thing! I, I did this. I went. Is it spelunking? It's spelunking, <laughs> but it's look what he's doing. Oh no! Uh, look uh, look uh. at this guy. <gasps> can you imagine? No, no. Oh, I'm, oh man. yeah, no. It's what I get. I got can't. No, breathe. I have anxiety. I can't breathe. Right? Yeah. Where's he going? How's he even know if it opens? I know. I, I have all kinds of questions. So right now I'm <sighs> just breathing out. Oh god. When you breathe that, then you can't expand uh, your chest to get yeah. it back in. Uh, oh my god. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm coming up out of this. Ugh. All right, enough. And I, it's a, if I get I stuck, went spelunking, and we not went. like that. Yeah. Like that? There was a passage like that. Oh, no. You had, in order to get to the cavernous beauty of the no. open little pond I'm area and the stalagma, but they didn't tell us that. Yeah. And not only that, it went fucking uphill. And they told us you have a decision to make. You either go in head first or you go feet first. Or how about you go back? And then you're stuck. Back on with what out. you do. And I'm like, okay, well, I go in head. F- oh. I go in feet first, like a that, fucking moron. Uh-oh. And the thing goes uphill. So, I'm, I'm, you know. but the kid in front of me comes in head first. And I'll never forget this. I'm in seventh grade. I'm with my buddy. It's his uncle taking this crew of kids. We're in Harper's Ferry, uh, which is. Little, little interesting fact. You can stand on a plot of Harper's Ferry and be in West Virginia, Virginia, and Maryland all at the same time. They all touch right there. So we're in the in Harper's Ferry, and uh, this fucking kid wears one of these horse riding helmets. You know the fucking the the hard helmet that you wear when you ride a horse, like like a like the black ones, yeah, there? with the brim. <laughs> like this, like this. Yeah, that. That's what, what this hell? kid's wearing. What the hell? That was his choice of helmet. With the chin first. strap. Nice. And he is freaking the fuck out but we're face to face oh so he's God. screaming in my face i'm like shut the fuck up and i'm just trying to dig back to like shut the fuck up shut up and it's taking like 10 fucking minutes and i'm going up the hill like shut the fuck up shut up and i can't you can't punch or anything and then you get in there and it's a room bigger than this and it's just fucking gorgeous and i was terrified because i had to go back through it again that one MRI. I mean, I can't do MRIs anymore. And you, I had to do so many of them, and I can't. I, I was like, you got to put me in a bigger one or knock me the fuck they have, out. They have open ones. They're like two big drums, the open MRIs. They're not that big. They're not that open. Yeah. Uh-huh. I went in the open one. Yeah. Well, I also had a, um, a, and only one place in L.A. that I found has done it, but it's a seated one. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you just, that. why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you yeah. sit upright? You're getting yeah. my spine. Let me sit. And then everything just closes around the side, but this is all open. Interesting. Loved it. How about uh, more hilarious horribleness? Oh, there's an open one seated. Yeah, that. There it was. Great. It's like two two big units on either side of you. Yes, it. it's yeah. so good. <laughs> Instead of right here on your face going. Yeah. So that was the only uh, horrible or hilarious we got for you, but we got some fun TikTok. All right. This is what it looks like when we're drilling a tooth with a pretty large cavity. Oh. So any guesses as to what that little 
piece is. Um, what they're doing is using a round burr in a high speed and just slowly opening this up to expose more of the body of the cavity. And what we find inside can vary. It looks like a little piece of silver just flew out there. My best guess is that it was originally a silver filling yep. that got new cavities oh, around it. Yep. And essentially at some point that silver filling was just floating in cavity and so, so that's why it was unsupported it and just there? flew out there um but sometimes we find like spinach and <laughs> stuff like that as well <laughs> and now they're just going around from outside in and cleaning things up with a round burr and a slow speed let's see if this one needs a root canal um, it looks like it's really close to the nerve right now okay so the nerve space is exposed and so this tooth is going to need a root canal the reason why this area is not really bleeding is because the it's nerve dead. is actually necrotic and yeah. it's died already so nice. um it's possible that this doctor already knew that this tooth was going to need a root canal just based off the proximity to the nerve of the cavity and also the um, based of off the x-ray and it's going to need a crown as well Wow. How often Crazy. do you go to the dentist? Do you go twice a year? I go three times a year. Do you really? That's mm -hmm. what they're suggesting I do now, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. I'm doing Do you do all the gum care and stuff? I do. I, I do have do? a water pick. Mm -hmm. I still don't old school floss just because mm -hmm. I don't know how it to fucking do it. took me a while, it. but finally did it. I'd no. still, I do the individuals, mm -hmm. but I don't do the old school, yeah. which, you know, and, and <clears throat> they know because they're like, okay, show me. And then I just sit there and go like, <laughs> 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 as soon as I can't wind it up, they're like, yeah, you don't know how to do this. Yeah. And plus they can tell when you're not doing it properly too. But I also it. discovered just in the last three years, the the beauty of nitrous. Oh dentist. yeah. I had never, oh, I'm 50. I Maybe at 47, I started using, I also only have two cavities in my whole life. I have take good care of my teeth. So you just use nitrous at home? Now, now I just you discovered it. <laughs> yeah, no, I went in one day. You only day. have two cavities. Why the hell are you taking nitrous? For the cleaning and stuff, because they do the power cleaning now on me. and they do Deep the, cleaning. Yeah, deep cleanings. It hurt my so gums. But, gum? but the lady was, at, uh, look, I'll be honest. The lady was a fan. And she goes, have you ever tried nitrous? And I was like, nah, can we do that? And she's oh like, God. it's the best 40 your, bucks you'll ever your spend. dental so they, hygienist is a freaking drug yeah, dealer. Dope me up. And uh, now I won't do it without it because oh. I feel so good. So the next lady comes in. And she, she's like, I see in your chart you take nitrous. I go, yep. And she jacks it up. But so, again, I don't like to get too far away yes. from myself. Yes, I am yes. weed and shrooms every now and then. That is it. Okay. And she jacked this shit up so far, Dr. Drew. I said, and I heard the voice come out of me. I went, you got to dial it back. <laughs> like, I was fucked <laughs> up. I was like, no. I don't want to be at the... I just want to be casually okay. I don't want to be off the fucking yes. rails. Yeah, no. Off the rails. She had it. She was like, oh my God, your whole demeanor changed. I was like, I, I feel fucked up. <laughs> Wait, Drew, why are you so against uh, using nitrous for dental work? I'm not, but oh, okay. I but I was one. But you normally use it for significant, for that, like a root canal, for significant oh. dental work. He said he had two cavities. I'm like, well, why are you taking nitrous for? I mean, oh. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I don't, he's I'm just doing going it for from fun. My, my That's why he's doing yeah, it. Yeah, my regular deep clean. Yeah, well, I mean, is it? Well, I didn't so know he's bad? having deep clean either because that makes more what sense. What if it's not deep clean? What if it's just like a normal routine dental thing? And yeah. I was looking for a way to yeah. do more drugs. Check it you, out. You they can't, can't, already found the way. I'm stopping. They can't tell you no. They can't tell you no. You're paying for it. They just don't want to wheel the machine and shit over because they got to strap the mask on it's kind of a pain in the I've ass i never had yeah, it, it sounds wait. interesting cool. it well it, i'm telling you it made a difference i lay there mm -hmm. honestly though the dentist has never bothered me i've had braces retain so i've been going since i was a kid and i've fallen asleep in the chair before yeah me like, too. it doesn't really bother yeah. me but when she said that she's like wait till you see how comfortable you are and then i was like oh yeah. and and then they dial it back and also i'm like you're gonna let me drive home like this but they turn it off enough and i guess you float out of it before you're out of there yeah you come back fast yeah come back i home. didn't realize that more TikTok. there is no equality in a marriage absolutely none okay like for example in my marriage my husband's the hot one and i'm the rich one and every other marriage is different like for example your marriage will go through different time periods like sometimes you feel like you're putting in 90 percent and he's putting in 10 and sometimes you're putting in zero percent and he's putting in a hundred percent it's gonna vary all throughout there is absolutely no equality so don't let anyone fool you and tell you there is equality in marriage there isn't so I, I've got a is, is, she, is she got a lane somewhere? I mean, does she go talk about this stuff all the time? Yeah, she's in a polyamorous relationship. I was gonna say this is the her lady marriage. I've seen talking about yeah. bringing women in yeah. for her husband and stuff. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, can I also say I feel like she just contradicted herself because if you're talking about a marriage and we're talking about forever, forever is a you know it's an yeah. open ended set of time. And, yeah. And at some time you're doing zero and he's doing a hundred, but then you're doing a hundred and he's doing zero. Well, over time that is a quality. 
Yeah. Maybe not today. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not this week, this month, the last six well, months. I don't even know what she means by equality. I'm not quite sure what she's talking and about. So what yeah, what is rich and hot? Those are two and completely by the way, different she's things. She's both. I was gonna say you're an attractive woman. If you're that good looking, let's see your motherfucking husband. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm not down for that it, prostate it, massage. It, well, is there more here? No, might, no, no. Might, just, might, just be, just might even be funny. You guys don't think she's attractive? No, yeah, know, she is. What's interesting in Jordan, she's all the women look the same. They do the makeup the same. They do the hijab oh, the same. Right? And they look kind of like this. That's a very common sort of appearance. I don't know if she's Jordanian or not. But All right, you got any more TikTok? I suggest you pick up the chicken wing on either side and you'll feel the bones in between your thumb and index. Give it a turn, right? It's somewhat easy then for you to pull apart huh. the one bone and the rest... Dude. So delicious. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Um, uh, but when my chicken wings have two bones. Yeah, mine too. Of course yeah. they do. Huh. So, look, I'm all for that technique if you can just get all meat after it. But there is something primal about fucking biting down on a goddamn piece of meat and feeling a bone and dragging your yep. teeth across 100%. that shit. You know? in, in, yep, that's right. And, and, by the way, when it comes to, particularly with beef, there's a lot of nutrients close to the bone that we don't necessarily get unless we eat the bone, chew on a little bit. So more meat, more bone. That's my, that's yeah. my more philosophy. Uh, one more. You got another one? We're having so much fun here. Yeah. All right. I never really cared about like this, you know, like how you can like, this is fucking normal. I don't really give a shit. But I had an ex who was always like, you're fat. So bitch, I, it triggered me. <laughs> and then I got with someone and that motherfucker... And used it to fucking bitch. Um, I've never cared about losing weight ever again. <laughs> One good nut will get you. One good oh, nut will so get funny. you. Yeah, that, she's sort of that skinny fat world. Mm -hmm. And that's I always feel like bad for people that get issues. I don't find that unattractive I don't at either. All. I don't know. I'm I don't not saying that, that at all. Yeah. I feel bad when no. people have issues around sure. it. It's such a hard one to because solve. Because usually they have an issue because someone else told them something well, that was or her. they that saw was, something. Yeah. yeah, and then you find that guy that's like, nah, this is my shit right here. <laughs> like, yeah, and he'll lose you if you have a six pack. Oh, yeah. That's Okay, as I've gotten older, I've it's it's been interesting to me to watch women um, who I think are beautiful women out there explain that they like a dad bod. Yes, and that it's I've something that, that comforts them, yep. and and an abs a guy with abs. This was interesting. A girl told me that one time. I go, how? How is it? You don't find that attractive? She's like, look, to me, a guy with abs is a man who spends his life in the gym and is ignoring so many other things so, in his world. So this like, is what women point. do. They 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 point. inject narratives and stories and feelings into what the guy looks like. Mm -hmm. Now they do, and they'll still be into it. By the way, for a casual thing, for sure. But for a relationship, it worries them, and that's mostly what they're kind of interested in. So. I just had my because oh, I'm mostly right. heavily into PT right now, and my physical therapist just told me that actually abs. He's like, you know, this is your six pack muscle, or whatever. But when you have them tight, what it actually does is it draws the the pulls posture, your, pulls for your you. yeah, and then yeah. your posture and your shoulders end up being. Shit. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about right? it. Right, so good. Look at this <laughs> posture. Look at this posture. <laughs> no problem. I haven't had a six pack since I was probably like two months old. <laughs> All right, where should we go? Lefty Sun out on YouTube now. Yes, RyanSickler.com uh, is where everything is. I'm Ryan Sickler on all social media. Lefty Sun is on my YouTube at R Sickler. Go check it out. It's streaming there for free. Go show it some love, please. Honeydew Podcast. Yes, check sir. Check it out. Ryan, thank you, man. Always a pleasure, Dr. Drew. See you guys next time. Thank you, bud. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.